closing of the, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, we just heard is being stretched into a prayer and be like that. Uh, think about doing something. Ponder and study what you could maybe do proactively sometime in the future. Don't go and talk about it. Don't go and find other people to do it for you. Go and do it. I feel like that's intended above the extra prayers I'm preaching. Um, I love your leisure to know. Go and do it. You all knew. You all knew I was going to shape today's sermon around our habitat, the Bath and Dream, and our experiences in Sardin First Nation. And of course I have. Um, to me, that's it's a great example of putting our faith into action. We heard the message to go and do, and so we went and did. I'm going to show you a little video we made on site in a few minutes. Um, we, we took some of our, our tech equipment to the site, and, and Victoria interviewed um, our church members who were there working. Asked each person what, what prompted them to, to, uh, to come along on the build and whether they felt it was meeting their expectations. And, and, and then she took some of those video clips and, and wove them into this presentation. I was tempted to, to just show a, a few bits and pieces of it, because um, it is just a little bit long, but in the end I decided to run it in its entirety, because there's a lot of important things I want to highlight as it goes. Um, and, and of course, I wanted you to hear about it from some other voices, not just mine. Um, so I want you to note several things as you watch the video. Um, first, think about the fact that 11 of the 25 people on that build came from this little rural community of, church <coughs> community of faith. On a normal Sunday, we have, what, maximum 40 people in church, and we had 11 on that build. That's spectacular. It speaks really well of this congregation's commitment to putting our faith into action. Um, I want you to note the, the range of ages that are represented on that build. Um, from a young of, of 19 um, to, I won't be too specific, but so to somewhere around four times that. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> that. That is an extremely impressive statistic. In fact, we had a grandma and granddaughter on the, the build, which is, is great. Um, Diane and Candace Golden came along, and, and how cool is that to have? a grandma and granddaughter on the trip. Um, note, take note during the, the first segment when Reverend Bill comes on, how perfectly he sums up what we're doing there. Um, think about how blessed we are to have an outreach minister who not only is a gifted preacher, but is actually willing to come out there and sweat alongside the rest of us. Um, that's not just preaching about outreach, that's actually living it. Take note as you're watching during the, the segments, um, the construction that is taking place during the recording. The walls that you see in the background of some of these clips are our team's efforts. When we arrived, those walls were not up yet. So what you see is our work. Next, there's a, there's a, a quiet little scene I want you to take note of. Um, Reverend Bill's walking up the road to the build site after lunch one day. He's walking along with a young guy that, that you don't know. He's not part of the, the church family, um, but he's part of my family. One of my, <coughs> excuse me, one of my daughter's closest friends um, came along on the build, him and his brother. They were an active part of the build. They are not um, churchy type guys, um, but they spent two days on site working alongside Reverend Bill and the rest of us um, from the church. That's a kind of silent outreach that um, goes a long way towards changing that, that often negative perception that people have about church people. Um, and, and I feel like that's a really important thing. Every time somebody who's not part of our faith family, whether that be a friend or, or one of the Habitat team, one of the community members where we're working, every time one of us sees us living this faith, going and doing the work, living it out in actions, not just in words. I feel like we've imprinted some little part of what we mean by Christian onto their hearts. Back in, in on uh, July 23rd, in Reverend Bill's sermon, he talked about sowing the seeds, um, not always knowing when or if those seeds would take root. Well, having people from outside of our community of faith 
work alongside us doing important work is exactly that kind of sowing of seeds. There's no way of telling when or how those seeds may bear fruit. When you, when you watch the video, um, you'll also take note that several people speak of the significance of this being an indigenous build um, and how important it was as a, an act of reconciliation, an act of reconciliation, not just words about it, but, but action. I'll be talking further a, a little later about reconciliation because it, I mean, it's extremely important to me. And it was a big part of the reason and the way that I, that I organized this build. I'm gonna ask the team to run the video now and then uh, we'll talk a little more. <laughs> What's going on? We're helping build a house. <laughs> for Habitat for Humanity. We saw these First Nations. And that's a, per and that's a right thing to do. So, my name is Lisa Campbell and I work for Habitat for Humanity Grey Bruce as their partnerships manager. And part of my role is to coordinate team events, team build events, such as the one that John Bedell's team uh, has taken part in for the last two days. We started a partnership agreement with the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation back in 2016 with the Chippewas of Nawash Unceded First Nation up in Cape Croker. It has duplicated into Saugeen First Nation, which is where we are here today, and uh, resulted in 28 houses being built on First Nation territory in partnership. My team is, is I think there's 11 of us that are affiliated with St. John Stephensville, which is wonderful. Um, a couple of young colleagues that I used to work with um, before I retired. Uh, my sister, um, who always supports whatever thing I have going on. Um, several people from previous habitat builds that, that uh, I've gotten to know. Um, so 25 of us, which is astonishing to me that, that 25 of us all came up here to, to, to make this happen. I just like building and helping people. I've always had that big sense of, I want to help the community. Just coming to Habitat has um, allowed me to feel satisfaction in helping others. I'm here because John wouldn't leave me alone. He just kept bugging, no, that's a lie. I came to extend my Habitat for Humanity experience. Uh, and I guess more importantly, uh, the fact that this is an indigenous build, I see this as a very positive step that I could take as my beginning contribution to reconciliation. Uh, to learn something new and for the fun and to meet people and work with the community. Well, I didn't think I could do it. I was interested. But it wasn't until a friend said they were going to go, and so I said I'd come too. I'm here because I wanted to experience a habitat build, which I've never done before. And I was especially thrilled that it was an Indigenous build on First Nations. So um, that's really why I'm here. Because Habitat is an organization that I volunteered with for seven years. Uh, the work that they do, I feel, is amazing. Everybody deserves a place to live. And having the opportunity to be on a two-day bill is just unbelievable and uh, more than I ever expected. I tried to get here last year and was a little late in letting them know that, but I was uh, glad that I was able to join the team with my granddaughter this year, and uh, it's been a very positive experience for us both? Um, well, my grandmother let me know what was going on, and that's how I got connected to it. So, yeah, and of course I wanted to come and build and help out a community, so. Because I think that this is the way that we actually live out. We live out the gospel that we proclaim. And so this is, this is really putting the gospel, the, the good news, into action in a very tangible and palatable way. The timing was turned out to be absolutely perfect because we came in and within the first morning's work, we were raising walls. So we have actually framed um, walls on three houses. 
this was almost the perfect time to bring in a big group because when you're framing walls, you can use a whole lot of people um, and, and make them all productive. And, and the whole team has jumped in to do various tasks. Um, there's been nobody that has been underutilized and that was one of my fears. We learned that we can uh, join a group and get to know them well and um, work with people that know how to build and um, pick up some of their tips and guidelines. And You know what, it's been wonderful. I had no idea what I could do to help. So I really feel like I have accomplished stuff. Uh, using the nail gun. And like even though it's loud and it's, it's fun, it's fun. My aim may be a little off, but like, still hit the stud sometimes. I got to do a lot of stuff that I spent a lifetime doing that I haven't done for 20 years. So it's been kind of neat. The confidence and leadership that we've got from the Habitat team has been unbelievable. I feel like I've learned so much, made so many new friends. It's just unbelievable. The people that are working with the volunteers are amazing. They don't make you feel uh, inadequate. They they encourage everything and help you to try stuff and learning with working with tools and learning how to build a house and come back again and learn more. <laughs> it was awesome meeting other people that we we haven't uh, ever met before and how connected everybody was it was kind of cool. Just hearing everybody else's stories and uh, what they what they felt when um, we experienced the first day. It's really uh, filled me with gratitude for the experience. Everyone's so nice and supportive and they're like, that's okay, we all make mistakes. The teamwork is really great here. Even though we don't know each other, it's like we become friends in such a short time. Sure. Um, I've got to learn a lot, new skills, and see everybody work together and most people were learning as well, doing their first builds. Um, I mean, just putting together the walls and getting to use the saw, getting to use the nail gun, <laughs> just everything, learning, journey. Yeah, it was good. And I did try the saw, but it was a little too hard for me. And I didn't get into any of the power tools, but I'm really good with an X-Acto blade and a plumb line. And, uh... and we can see you've still got all your fingers. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, actually, using a nail gun for the first time was a gr was a great experience. <laughs> uh, swinging a sledgehammer was a was a great experience. Um, you know. Uh, Sitting around with 25 other people last night and uh, and sharing our stories was was really uh, was a, was a great experience and finding out why other people are, are kind of finding their way here, um, recognizing recognizing um, the consequences of the past, but also the hope for the future. To share this experience with 25 other. I think like-minded people that saw this as an important thing to be done. I couldn't possibly be more thrilled with the results that we've accomplished. So yes, it met my expectations big time. We would like to sincerely thank John Bedell and his incredible team of awesome folks that have come to join us for the last two days at our build site. We welcome you back with open arms whenever you want to come and return. Thank you so much. Turn out the lights, the party's over. Okay. Somebody cut the sound just a, a little too, too quick there. Oh, that was, uh, have to give me a minute before I can talk again. So thank you, Victoria, for putting that together. Um, great reminder of, of what we were doing up there.
So it seems like a good time to mention that in addition to all the, the, the work that we accomplished, everything that we learned there and, and, and the fun that we had together as a team, we also left a contribution of $5,187.89 from our team. Um, that's after all expenses were paid. Um, and that is not, um, most of that did not come from the church. That was fundraised by the, the participants. Um, the church covered the, the youth um, participation, but, but other than that, everybody fundraised and, and contributed and, and we left that much of a donation to continue our work. Um, long after we're gone. So, um, so with all that in mind, before I, I move on, I want to be careful to point out that, that even though I always talk about outreach and, and going out and, and doing the work our faith inspires, I'm not diminishing the work that also takes place in this place. You can't just do outreach without also studying and talking about the foundations of, of this faith of ours. In a world where we're, we're constantly bombarded with, with challenges and uncertainties, that faith um, serves as a, a beacon that lights our path forward for, toward peace and, and hope and, and better life. But all of that requires a ministry team like we have here, like we're so fortunate to have here, that keeps us focused and thinking about something greater than ourselves uh, and an active force that propels us to want to make a positive difference in our world. We need a ministry team like that, that challenges us to step out of our comfort zones, um, to bring love and compassion to those that are suffering and, and to stand up for justice in the face of adversity. In this place, we talk all the time about the work of our faith. Our offering song talks about good works of service, not just gifts of money, but service also. The sung blessing at the end of every service says, we're going to live Jesus, follow his teachings. This we will show in our words and our ways. Not just words, but our ways, our actions. And our pastoral prayers often include that reminder that the answer to our prayers sometimes depends on the work of our own hands. Every major faith, everyone, including ours, has some version of, of the golden rule. For us, it comes from Matthew 7, 12. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We surely, surely did not live out that instruction when it came to our dealing with the First Nations people that were here on this land when we arrived here. And we surely didn't live out our faith in, in long-standing misguided attempts to bring civilization to the poor savages. Um, instead, what we gifted to them was, was broken treaties and, and reservations and residential schools and diseases like smallpox and measles and pollution and so on. We could have and we should have learned so much from them about living in balance with the land instead of just trying to conquer it. Um, but that was surely not the colonial approach. When I did my first um, habitat build on indigenous territory, our team leader actually arranged a trip uh, one evening um, to the teaching rocks at Petroglyphs Provincial Park. The translation of one of the interpretive panels there um, touched me then and, and ever since. It said, of all the teachings we receive, this one is the most important. Nothing belongs to you. Of what there is, of what you take, you must share. That's kind of their version of the golden rule, and it, and it has great wisdom. I know the United Church has already recognized and apologized for our role in, in our treatment of Canada's indigenous peoples, especially the residential school debacle. But we're still working on, on a path forward toward reconciling what happened in the past with what has to happen in the future. Our team in June took a huge step forward in walking that path. We did, some, we did some studying before the build um, because our, our First Nations have a, a rich history um, that we don't often recognize. When you go off to do a, a habitat build on indigenous territory, there's, there's a very real danger of considering ourselves to be the, the white saviors of the, the poor natives. Um, but when you educate yourself about the realities, you soon realize that the First Nations people here are really not the poor relatives of our Canadian family. That's a, a white colonial attitude in play. Educating ourselves means recognizing that at the time colonial forces arrived here on Turtle Island, there were fully foreign communities and nations amounting to tens of millions of people, and they had lived here on this land for thousands of years. We didn't discover this land at all. 
And I've said many times before, probably too many times, I'm, I'm not a fan of talking about religion. Um, too often, for me, religion is about dogma and doctrine and, and ritual. I like to ponder questions of faith instead. Faith has always played a, a significant role in, in shaping the world that we live in. It's what provides a, a framework for moral guidance, um, a sense of community, and a connection to something larger than ourselves. But what truly brings faith to life is when it transforms into action. When our beliefs <coughs> excuse me, motivate us to make a positive difference in the world. Faith in action is a testimony to the transformative power of God. It compels us to step beyond our limitations, to serve our fellow human beings, and to strive toward a more just and compassionate world. So with God's help, let's live our faith, not just in our hearts and our minds, but in our actions. And as always, always, thanks be to God. <laughs>